People in East Ukraine's second biggest city of Lugansk, they say life there has become unbearable since army troops began a siege. Half of the residents have abandoned their homes and with essentially no water, food or even power supplies, the city council has announced a humanitarian crisis. The phone connection has also been severed and social networks are boiling with attempts to get any information of those left trapped in Lugansk. And here on RT International, we've managed to get some accounts of what's happening online. My parents and relatives are in Lugansk. There are no gunshots anymore, only bombardments. And they are aimed at residential houses, which are being destroyed. The situation is critical. The phones don't work. Emergency services aren't fixing the electricity quickly enough. There are empty shelves in the stores. People are scared to go outside to buy food in the street markets. And the prices, they are astronomically high. The crisis was, of course, in the spotlight during the latest UN Security Council meeting. But it seems Kiev's representatives don't share the same view of what's going on in the country. There is no humanitarian crisis in Ukraine, as it is continued to be portrayed by our Russian colleagues. Well, the Russian ambassador has called for swift international efforts to stop the civilian suffering. Moscow, in fact, initiated the emergency meeting of the UN Security Council. With more details from the UN headquarters in New York, here's RT's Alexei Ryshevsky. The situation is getting grave uh, every day. That is according to uh, the uh, Russia's envoy to the United Nations, Vitaly Churkin. There is a general acknowledgement in the United Nations, as we, can, as we could have heard from that uh, meeting, that the situation is a full-blown war at the moment, with more and more casualties every day, more and more IDPs every day, and uh, civilian uh, residential areas being bombarded and destroyed um, by uh, the Kiev military forces. Uh, so uh, what Vitaly Churkin, the envoy of Russia to the United Nations, offered is international intervention into this humanitarian catastrophe. First of all, uh, that would involve convoys with humanitarian aid, um, internationally supervised and internationally monitored, moving from Russia uh, to uh, Ukraine. Because, as I've said, and as Mr. Shurkin underlined, uh, the situation is getting serious with every day. Let's listen to what Russia's envoy had to say. Artillery, tanks, as well as grad rockets have been used. Locals are saying phosphorus and cluster bombs are still being used. There is indiscriminate shelling of housing blocks and critical civilian infrastructure. In many small towns, about 80 percent of houses have been destroyed. According to most conservative estimates, more than 600 buildings have been razed to the ground. It's worth mentioning as well that uh, while uh, representatives of Russia, China, Chile and UN officials on humanitarian, uh, uh, humanitarian affairs were talking about uh, the grave humanitarian situation, representatives of France uh, said, uh, talked about s further sanctions against Russia and envoy of the United States said that uh, there's no need for more international uh, help at uh, the site, at the scene, at the eastern Ukraine, because people from, the, uh, from uh, international organizations are already there. They just need access uh, to the sites and that it is up to Russia to uh, uh, provide that and to stop this fighting in eastern Ukraine. 